Have you ever wondered why your photos turn out overly bright or overly dark despite you having set your aperture and shutter speeds correct? Solving this puzzle lies in three letters, ISO. Today we're explaining ISO and how it affects your photography. Whether you are shooting under the sun or in dark night street photography settings like I like to do. Understanding ISOs is very important. And at the end of this video, I also have assignments for you so you can start practicing and see what ISOs does to your photos right after watching this. You can think of ISO as your camera's sensitivity to light. The lower the ISO, the less sensitivity. That is perfect for bright days. And the higher the ISO, the more sensitive your camera or your camera sensor is to take in light. Higher ISOs is typically used for darker scenes or night street photography, as I mentioned, and stuff like that when you are in darker environments. But higher ISOs also affects how your photos look they can have a grainy or noisy look, and that is something we don't want. We want to have a clean image, or as clean image as we can from the start, and you can always add grain or noise in your photos in post-production. So ISO typically starts at 100, which is ideal for bright conditions. As light decreases, you can increase the ISO to 400, 800, or higher. Remember that the higher ISO you have, the brighter the photo, but that also adds that noise we talked about. And higher ISOs from 32 to 6400 can create a lot of noise or grain in your photos. Now, this used to be a problem, but new cameras these days, or newish cameras, cameras from four or five years ago even, they can handle high ISOs quite well. And if that's even a problem, you can always use the AI denoise feature that, for example, Lightroom has. These softwares are really good at cleaning up your image. So let's take a look at this photo. That's shot at 6400 ISO. Very grainy, very noisy. But if we apply this AI denoise technology in Lightroom, you get a nice clean image. I found a scene that we're going to shoot now explaining ISO and I've set my camera up to a shutter speed of 125th of a second and the aperture is at 2.8 and I've got a very low ISO of 125 that's the lowest on my Fuji so I'm going to take one picture and we are going to gradually increase the ISO and see what happens that's 125 now we bump it up to 200 And one stop more to 400. Eight hundred. Sixteen hundred. So as you can see, it's starting to get lighter and lighter, but we also have more noise or grain in the image. I'm going to go all the way up to 3,200. And 6400 because I have such a high shutter speed and uh, yeah that's why we need to bump up the ISO all the way to see what actually happens in this image but we are probably going to get uh, a very grainy image at the end but let's continue 6400 ISO and now all the way up to 12800 So as you can see, when we go from very low ISOs, we have less grain or noise in the image. And when we have the maximum amount of ISO, we do get a lot of grain or noise in the image, but we also have it correctly exposed or we can see what's actually going on. So obviously you have to compensate when you are in dark environments such as street photography we are doing now, or if you're out shooting on a sunny day where you typically use a much lower ISO. ISO, shutter speed and aperture work together. That's what's called the exposure triangle and are equally important parts to create an image. High ISO can compensate for fast shutter speeds or small apertures in dim light. See my other videos about shutter speed and aperture respectively, but in good lighting, a low ISO works best for clear and sharp images. You can start with the lowest ISOs on your camera and you can gradually increase as needed. 
Always check your images for noise. Modern cameras these days can handle high ISOs really well, but it's a balance. So you can experiment with your own cameras and see how far you can push ISO to still have a nice, sharp, clean image. Keeping that good quality we always want. And since we know high ISOs isn't that big of a deal anymore, you can set your ISO to automatic, but cap it at 6400. And most cameras can also do that. Set an upper cap limit for your automatic ISO. I have that set to 6400 when I'm out shooting my night street photography. And that way you can concentrate on the two more interesting aspects of the exposure triangle, which is aperture and shadow speeds. And that's really where the creativity is. And before we get to your assignment, that's ISO very simply explained. Remember, photography is all about being creative and having this understanding of what ISO is and what it does is very important. Now for the assignment, and I do only have one for you in this video, since ISO is not really that much of a deal, you can't really be that creative with it, but I still want you to go out and practice. So let's call this the evening light challenge. And for this, you need a tripod or a stable surface, and obviously your camera, set everything to manual mode on your camera and you only concentrate on adjusting the ISO. Let's say you start with a shutter speed of 125th of a second and an aperture of 5.6 or 7 or 8 or whatever you want to do with your aperture. Just make sure those things are set manually so you only adjust the ISO. Then you start with a super low ISO of let's say 100 and you can gradually increase to 200, then 400, then 800. 1600, 3200 and 6400 finally. And you can see how this affects your image. And this assignment should teach you how to adapt in changing light conditions using ISO, particularly when you can't use artificial light. I hope you like this little video and this uh, introduction to what ISO is. It's always good to get back to the basics and practice these very basic things that is very important to understand. And if you like this video, you might want to check out this one after. It's about shutter speed and that's something I really like to play around with. If you aren't subscribed to my channel, that would be awesome if you did and also leave a thumbs up on this video and I hope to see you around on the next one. Bye bye.